Booyah. What's our star car? Uh, we are starting here. Uh, star car. What is the star car? It's the Ariel Atom. Oh, yeah! Get those nerds! Well, everybody, let that be your wake-up call for a Tuesday morning edition of Bid Nerds, your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day on all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. I'm wearing my Bring a Trailer hat today, Michael D. What do you think of that? Yep. I love it. Trucker hat, dad style with the curved rim. Look at Hell you. Hell yeah. No Frato Brimo today. <laughs> Oh my goodness, JP! What are we gonna do? Uh, that last clip of our uh, intro, yeah, uh, is of the old Durst Studio up in the Arts District. Yeah, and uh, dude, I miss that place, man. I, I right, I can't wait till we have a studio. Wouldn't that be nice? We are going to build a new studio soon. We had the coolest studio in the 18B in the Arts District of oh, Las Vegas, man. Uh, yeah. but unfortunately, uh, the building got sold and we got ousted. Everybody in the building yeah. got ousted, so they're like, "Beat it!" Uh, our yeah. sign is still up because they if you're in the downtown area in las vegas and you drive down charleston and like commerce uh yeah. you'll see our sign on the front of this big building that they are remodeling but they haven't taken the sign down maybe they just think the defrostination <laughs> sign is just that cool it is that cool it absolutely um, is that cool and isn't it now like an office for you know trying like a halfway house for uh, women it's of the it's night? nothing right now it is they oh, are okay. actually it is it is it, the building was built or not built but bought by a charity that does Perfect. something for homeless people i'm not sure entirely what it, i think yeah. they're gonna put like a cupcake place in there and raise oh. money for a charity or something i, I there you go i don't know i don't that's know they're right. we'll cuppies yeah we're in we'll keep you, we'll keep um, you they're really nice people though uh so yeah. uh we're you know rooting for them but we needed a different space anyway so we are currently looking in the downtown las vegas area my name yeah. is john polnick everybody i am the host of this show supposedly uh there's my name down below we are in las vegas right are this where this particular studio is is uh right on the las vegas strip in downtown Las Vegas, right across from the Fremont Street Experience. Michael Deeb is usually in San Francisco, but this week he's here. He's here. Yeah. He's in Vegas yeah. with us uh, celebrating his birthday last night. We had a great time. Yeah. That was fun. Oh, man, that was thanks, really Thanks fun. again to Chris, man. What a, what a great Oh, yeah, he hooked us up. Yeah, my uh, my friend uh, used points, and we got, uh, we got styled out. And look at my birthday <laughs> gifts here. Look at this, JP. Can you see these? Oh, snap. Ooh, you got some guys' yeah. customs. Oh, look man, and look at that. Yeah. It's a paint to sample guys' yeah. custom bracelet. Not bad. That's Rubino Metallizzato, which is nice. Italian for ruby, dummy. Very, very nice. Um, yeah, that looks got, good on you, man. Hooked up. I got hooked up. Yeah, I love these things, man. They're awesome. I'm, I'm in love. They're awesome. You can get your own guys' customs bracelet at uh, gyx underscore customs on Instagram. That is the only place to order one of these. They don't have a website. Right. They don't have you know any of the traditional stuff. There's no Etsy. There's no, you just have to basically go to the Instagram page and DM them. And maybe yeah. if she likes you and likes your car or likes your watch, she'll make a bracelet yeah. that matches it. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. So they're, don't they're look at us. They're bespoke, and they're they are bespoke. Yeah. yeah, and they're worth they're worth the effort. And you'll be shocked at how beautiful they are and how inexpensive they are. That is truth. Uh, all right. So what we do on this show is we nerd out on all these cars. We, we pick the most interesting cars of the day. There's a, <laughs> well, I don't know, a dozen different uh, auto enthusiast sites. There's P Car Market. There's Bring a Trailer, Boys. of course. Cars and Bids. Uh, Rad for Sale. Uh, all uh -huh. these auction sites have all kinds of interesting stuff. And we go through and kind of cherry pick the most interesting ones and talk to, talk to you about the cherry pick cars that we found for right. you. We nerd out about those cars and then we make predictions as to what we think they'll actually sell for when the hammer hits the sound block at the end of the auction uh michael d we had five cars from yesterday let's very yeah. quickly go over those and see how our yeah. predictions did before G we go to today's cars gp remind me was the 2006 honda s2000 was that our star car I think why not yes i believe that was, was on cars and bids and uh this was a nice one a, a red ap2 with about 
eighty something thousand miles. It was a it's a miler, uh, but it, you know bone stock all in good condition, and they laid out all the service records. And and who wouldn't want a high mile, you know, slightly lower priced AP two? Because listen, these things have been going up in value for the last like ten years. Uh, so to find one under thirty grand is uh, an event unto itself. <laughs> a stock one that you would want to own for less than thirty is is worth uh, hooting and hollering about. So I thought this car, because of the service records and uh, the lack of modifications, might reach twenty seven thousand. You took the under at twenty six five, and the car sold JP for just twenty two thousand two hundred fifty dollars, proving once again that if you have a really nice car that's a super enthusiast. Cars and bids might force you to leave some money on the table. I think you and I would agree that this car would have brought a little more money on BAT. What do you think? Yeah, I do. Um, I also think that this is one of those examples of where someone's trying to get artsy with their picture. Uh, and oh so they put God. a tree in front of it. You're n- right. Dude, you just stop. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just, if you don't know how to do it, don't. Don't even try. That's- get someone that knows what they're doing to take the pictures or just take clear pictures. At least these pictures, most of his pictures to this guy's credit aren't that horrible. I just thought that was kind of funny that he put the tree in front of it. Um, I don't think these are worth, yeah, right. I don't think these are really worth that much though. I mean, I don't, they, they like, I don't know if they're appreciating. I feel like they've just kind of like leveled out. They never really got that cheap and they've never really shot up that high. And JP, um, we, we just saw a CR, which I know again is a special that, edition. That's of an this outlet. I don't think that, that yeah. I don't think that plays right. But, well, but, but I think that when, when a, when a, when a S 2000 breaks a hundred thousand dollars, it's going to bring up the values of the better ones that are yeah. below. Now, clearly this one was not the best one. Again, they used aftermarket valve guides or springs or something when they changed the head gasket, which yeah. I've never heard of happening before. Uh, but twenty-two thousand, I think, is a re- is a is a really inexpensive price for a nice, clean stock AP two. Yeah. You've got to understand, a lot of the people uh, that that have had these cars, the second and third owner of these cars, are a much younger set that modify them, and they just don't look stock. This car is basically bone stock. Yeah. Um, and so I think it would have brought at least a little more. Maybe not thirty for this one with almost a hundred thousand miles on it. Uh, but it certainly would have brought maybe three or four thousand dollars more if it was on BAT. So yeah. anyway, at least that's my couple, take. Yeah. Yeah. You All won right. that one, JP. Good job. Uh, we'll jump over to BAT and look at a, a bright yellow banana. I'm mean, sorry, <laughs> a 1997 Range Rover 4.6 HSE, the Vitesse. Uh, Rafi, our dear friend Rafi Najarian, uh, had one of these and rocked it for years. And so I have always looked longingly at this model. I love those 18 uh, inch Mondial wheels. Um, they look like they came right off a Ferrari and got slapped onto an English SUV. Hmm. Um, these cars are not reliable rides. Uh, they're cool and they're bitching when they're running, but that is not always the case. Uh, our car had uh, just over 110,000 miles on it, I think. Um, and we wondered if it would even break 10 grand. So I said 10, you said 10.5. Uh, the car sold on Bring a Trailer for just $8,300. And, uh, I mean that, that that number alone for a, you know a '97 with 100,000 miles that tells you how soft these are in the secondary market, and that is a testament to their lack of reliability uh, or lack of like you know quality construction. So anyway, there you go. Uh, yeah, neat car, and, but nobody wants to own that thing, you know. It, and this one really does seem like a super clean one. So if this right. one's not going to bring the money, I don't think right. any of these ever will. It's interesting that we haven't seen like we've seen discos kind of coming up and people have really yep. off-road kitted out their, you know, sure overland thing. style yeah, their yeah, discos. Yeah. Um we haven't really seen anyone try that with one of these. It'd have been interesting if someone took this and yeah. oddly enough, safaried a Range Rover. I know that sounds right. ridiculous because yeah. it is an overlander right. in the first place, but this <laughs> one's really set up for the street. It'd be cool to see this with the big wheels and tires and a huge roof rack and stuff. And like, I don't know, because with the bright yellow color, you could definitely make this one look like one of those, uh, you know, Dakar camel oh, uh, cigarette livery would look super dope totally. on this thing. Yeah. At 8200 bucks, that may have been, yeah, this may have been an opportunity for someone to buy it cheap and do that to it and then bring money because it would have had more eyeball. I don't know, just a, just and a that, thought. That, absolutely. Listen, JP, when I teed this car up uh, a couple days ago, I was thinking, oh man, look at that. That's going to be an $18,000 car. Yeah. And then reading the tea leaves the morning of, I lowered my bid down to 10 and, uh, and then it didn't even break that. So yeah. whatever, dude, yeah. uh, what <laughs> did bring, what did bring 18 was the 1994 Jaguar XJS. This was a six liter V12 convertible, which is like 30 something thousand miles. Uh, and it's a black colorway with a black top tan interior. And then these like machined and gold painted wheels. This is, uh, 
this is Radwood royalty right here, man. I mean, look at that. He, he, he makes you want to wear like the blazer with the sleeves pushed up, you know, to your elbows. Uh, <laughs> all uh, Miami Vice. Uh, this is absolutely the bad guy car in, in an '80s action movie. Um, I thought this car might break twenty grand. I so I said twenty two. Uh, you drank the Kool Aid and said twenty three, and I knew I was going to win it when you went the over. This car sold for eighteen thousand five hundred dollars. It did not quite bring twenty grand, and this has to be as clean and as nice and for whatever it's worth as desirable a Jaguar XJS as there is, and it didn't even bring twenty grand. So again, you know, lack of reliability crushes these in the secondary market, and and it it, it kind of you know you and I are like died the wool Porsche guys, right? We love mm-hmm. 911, especially the air-cooled stuff. Those cars are so reliable mm-hmm. and and they bring so much money in today's market and this thing, you know, was such a status symbol back in the day and yet today uh the Porsche crowd, the guys, you know, that are even the guys that are red with like you you'd want to be seen with the car but you you don't want to own it. Nobody wants to You don't want to be stuck with it. Yeah. Yeah, oh my god. All right, JP, uh, here was a bright spot for you. The 2005 Ferrari F430 Coupe, uh, 38,000 miles, which is, I know is ridiculous as sounds. Please don't send hate mail. That's high mileage for a Ferrari. You know, that's, that's a lot of miles on one of these things. Somebody took one of these that had an F1 gearbox and did a six-speed manual swap. The receipt for that service was in there, and it tallied a close to $30,000, um, which my partner here, JP, says is actually probably a bargain considering what you're getting. Uh, and the amount of labor that would go into doing that. So knowing that a six-speed manual that came from the factory would be a two, you know, co- hovering around two hundred thousand dollars for a car uh, with over thirty thousand miles, we figured this guy was going to do well. So I said one hundred and ten, and you said, "Uh, uh-uh, that thing is worth one hundred and twenty or more." And you were really close to a Yahtzee on this one mm-hmm. because this thing sold for one hundred twenty-two thousand five hundred. Uh, JP, well done by you. Uh, congratulations to the seller. I think you got every penny out of that thing. Uh, and congratulations to the buyer because you just bought a six-speed manual and saved eighty grand in the process. Uh, I, I just that's a win, win, win. I'm the only one that lost on this one, so f that car. Uh, you know, the, <laughs> we had a comment. I can't remember if it was on the Facebook page or the YouTube channel. Uh, someone yeah. actually put up a link to a kit to actually do that to these guys. Whoa! Uh, you know, so this well is done. this is a thing that's happening. I wanted to give a shout out to that guy, but it, apparently yeah. uh, I can't seem to find it. But uh, so yeah. thanks for that comment. Uh, that was that's great. great for, we'll we'll great share that take. in the uh, yeah. comments. Yeah. I mean, think about it again. You can find a nice coupe or, or spider with the F1 gearbox, and if that kit is legit and you have a mechanic you trust to do it right, the main thing here is is not putting in the hard parts. Uh, it's it's programming so that your car is not throwing up codes. Last thing you want to do is be driving your Ferrari and have some red light flashing at you that makes you think you might, <laughs> right. the next mile might be terminal. Uh, you know what I mean? So uh, as long as you get the programming right, it's not throwing codes at you or faults all the time, uh, then you're really going to enjoy that car. And listen, we're talking 500 horsepower with a 3,000 pound car. You're talking GT3 RS performance in this yeah. thing with a manual transmission. Put an exhaust on there and you will think you are driving a cup car. It's awesome. Shout out to Arthur Rosenberg for the, uh, for the, for the, sh- what did he say? The gated six.com sells a oh, manual conversion nice. kit for the F430. That is uh, he did not know how that's much it cost great. either, but we both suspect it was a lot. Yeah. And, and that's, that's amazing. I, that's a great take. Thank you, Arthur, for uh, sending that out. All right, JP, last car of the day and another win for you, the 1992 Porsche 968 cab that was in New England. <laughs> Remember this uh, cobalt blue car with the gray interior, manual transmission, fair miles, if I recall. Hmm. Uh, but these cars, are, these cars the, the convertibles are surprisingly soft. Um, I said 22, you said 23. This car brought all the money on P-Car Market, $26,000. It sold. So you got three wins to start the week to my two, and there we go. Tuesday, all it's right. on. You're going down today, sucker. Game on. All right, guys. That was a recap of yesterday's <coughs> most interesting cars of the day on Cars of Bids, Bring a Trailer, P-Car Market, and all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. Uh, make sure if you haven't yet already, hit the subscribe button. You know, like yeah, yeah notifications all the things we do this every day monday through friday at about nine o'clock in the morning for you not for us mm-hmm. we don't want to see each other you think we like each other hell yeah. no we just do I this for you people i don't even look at the screen 
Honestly, <laughs> nobody wants to see either of our faces. Just listen to it. Uh, yeah. All right. So today's cars, we got to, I, I actually like today's kind of uh, bunch of cars that you pick. We are all over um, the place today. And yeah, it really is. So let's, uh, what cars, we, what's our big car of the day is something that, I, can you even call this thing a car? I don't even know. I don't know. I It really is. It is, it is somewhere between a toy and an automobile in you will find um, on, I think it's bring a trailer, a supercharged 2013 wow. Ariel Adam three. Uh, this thing only has 2,500 miles and is offered out of Jacksonville, Florida. Um, in, during this time period, uh, the Ariel Adam threes were using the K24 Honda Motorsport motor. Um, and I tried to look it up to see what the specs might be because they're not listed in the ad. The K24 is a venerable motor. It's a 2.5, 2.4 liter it, it, four from Honda. It's made into a six speed manual transmission. In the Atom, it has a limited slip differential, and what makes the Atom so breathtaking is it's lightweight and then literally um, pushrod suspension. It's coilovers with pushrods. This is like, you know, right off the track at Le Mans onto a car that probably weighs, you know, 1,500 pounds, if that, maybe 1,000. I don't even know. Uh, but the K24, trying to get the specs was really difficult because there's so many different versions of the K24 uh, they don't tell us if it's an A or a this or a that or whatever. Uh, but by all accounts, this thing stock probably made somewhere between 160 and 200 horsepower. And the supercharger is probably going to give you at least 50% or more horsepower. So what I'm guessing is that this car makes around 250 horsepower uh, and weighs almost nothing. The mechanical grip on this thing is incredible. There's even a little tiny bit of arrow, but it's the lightweight uh, and the fact that there's literally no car around you. You have a, a windscreen, like a motorcycle, JP, but like there's no doors, there's no roof. Uh, to drive one of these things, you're probably wearing a helmet and gloves. Uh, and by all accounts, you will feel like you're, you know, racing some sort of hybrid between uh, a, a purpose-built race car and a motorcycle. Uh, they have incredible grip. They're exhilarating to drive because of the lightweight. And they are very, very popular with the track guy community. Um, the Ariel Atom is an absolute ringer because it's probably faster than almost any exotic supercar on a closed course. And that's what makes the, them have such incredible appeal. So even if this thing was six figures, imagine going to the track and humiliating a guy that dropped 400 grand on a Ferrari. Uh, and that's the appeal. It's, it's the, 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 the cheat code for the everyday guy or the guy of more reasonable means. Uh, so the Ariel Adam JP barely broken in out of Jacksonville, Florida. What do you think? Have you ever rocked one of these things? Uh, the, one of the earlier ones, and those didn't even have windscreens, and it had a much much smaller engine. I don't think it had a supercharger or turbo or anything the, like that. I think the one of the original spec was to get the two liter AP1 S2000 motor, which was yeah. 240 horsepower, but didn't have nearly the torque this would have with the supercharger. Yeah. Uh, and that, but that was, that was a really cool setup, it, you know, especially being an S2000 fan myself. So that thing felt like, you know, when you're a little kid and you've never driven a car, uh, and you imagine what a car is like, uh, yeah. that's pretty much what you hoped it would be. <laughs> I mean, that car totally. was just a ridiculously fun, absurdly fast for no good reason other than, you know, like you said, the powertrain wasn't a monster, but there's nothing there to move. Uh, and without a windshield at all, yes, uh, like in Washington State, you had to wear a helmet with one of these um, because it was because of its classification. It's kind of like driving one of them stupid, uh, what are those Kawasaki things that you see all yeah. over the strip? That, uh, uh, the, uh, yeah. God, those are the worst things. The three-wheel right, three things. I yeah, but this is, yeah, yeah. God, they're absolutely this is, totally this is the animal. opposite yeah. of that. Um, yeah. Other than the feeling of like not being much there, uh, this car is a true enthusiast race. I mean, this is as close to a race car as you get without being in an actual race car. It's amazing that they let you put a license plate on one of these. I can't believe it. It really is. It's incredible to think that that passes smogs and somehow like, you know, uh, pedestrian safety and impact uh, standards. So clearly they're built, uh, you know, with like a monocoque around you um, to, to keep you safe so that you can go out and be a hooligan and have, I mean, literally unbridled fun. Yeah. Uh, so JP, with about five hours to go, uh, our 2,500 mile 2013 Aero Adam 3 uh, is sitting at forty-one, forty-two thousand dollars down there in Jacksonville, Florida. But it's got a long time to go, but I just don't know what the secondary market on one of these things is. I believe this car was just over a hundred grand when it was new, um, but I think you could probably still get a new one, even if it costs a little more money. You could get a brand new one with with maybe greater specs or or updated suspension. I mean, it's hard to believe this car is, you know, eight years old already. Um, I still, I think the twenty-five hundred miles. 
uh, helps it because it's barely, it seems like it's barely broken in, uh, mm. in my opinion. So I think there's a little room left. I'm going to go 50 grand, but I, you know, what are the comps? How do you, how do you judge what an Ariel Adams worth? Tell me what you think. Where, how do you, how do you come to your number? Man, I'm right there with you. Uh, it's, it's tough because once you start getting into that 50 range, you're looking at actual cars that have actual car right. features. You know, this doesn't have air conditioning or any creature comforts or storage or anything, right? You can't go tour yeah. in this thing. You can't go cruise up the yeah. coast uh, without having a follow car and someone bringing your luggage with you. Uh, you know, you got to love on, what is it? Top gear. When they did that whole bit with one of these that, you know, they have the, the right here guys, if you can see it, you've got the little <laughs> red switch, the, 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 yeah. the emergency turnoff switch. So everybody <laughs> at the car show and everybody at the track, all your buddies are going to come and turn your damn car off when you're standing there. That's like it's hilarious uh yeah, so and true. uh but uh you know you say upgrade the suspension yeah. to what i mean what yeah, how I do know. you upgrade the suspension on this thing I don't um know, I mean, i'm i'm gonna go tough. slightly under i'm gonna go 49 and i honestly right. i think i'm gonna lose that because i think these are worth more and if you want something purpose-built that like you said earlier you know yeah. track monster uh that's gonna compete with uh with a gt3 rs or something like that right what do you get for under six figures that's gonna basically embarrass those guys this yeah. and this only um so yeah. half yeah. half the power but less than half the weight and you got you have a superior recipe for speed so and these are amazing really reliability too these just they're not right. it's a honda i mean it's a honda you just yeah. put gas in it and oil and go you know uh yeah. so yeah love it really love this car would love to own one one day all right jp let's move on and i'm gonna go slightly out of order and ask you to tee up the alfa romeo that is mm -hmm. on bring a trailer we have uh found today a really cool car uh this is a 1991 alfa romeo sz and sc stands for sprint zagato so in the mid 80s fiat took full control 1986 fiat took over alfa romeo and a couple of years later uh the brass and the, the bean counters at fiat uh wanted Alpha to come up with a car that would sort of harken back to their previous glory days of, uh, you know, earlier in the century uh, and bring a car that would sort of inspire the enthusiast. Um, so they built this car uh, with help from uh, designers at Fiat, designers at Alpha, and designers at uh, Zagato. Uh, even though this is badged as Zagato, this is not uh, strictly a Zagato design. It was actually kind of designed in house, but Zagato sort of did the build. Um, and so they got a lot of credit for this car. What you're looking at is essentially an Alfa Romeo Milano chassis that is chopped. And then the suspension is the upgraded suspension from the Alfa Romeo 75 race car. So it's got Coney derived suspension, but this is, this car holds like a G and a half. If you believe it, uh, JP, these cars handle really, really good, despite that clearly uh, short uh, wheelbase. It also uses the same 3-liter uh, V6, the Busso-derived 3-liter uh, V6 that would have been in the Alfa Romeo Milano Quadrifoglio. But while that car made 180 horsepower in the United States, in the Sprint Zagato, which were never sold in the U.S., it makes 210 horsepower and 180 pound-foot of torque. Uh, Five-speed manual transmission. The V6 is in the front, JP, but the gearbox is out behind the rear axle, uh, kind of like your Porsche transaxle cars. Uh, it creates really excellent weight distribution um this body is like a composite uh, body was the first one that alpha had ever done uh, and the design team that built this or that created this car uh used cad cam design techniques that was the first time alpha had done that um some of the things that i really like uh jp if you notice the front end of this car it has two pair of three headlights did you see that I when did, you were looking yeah. at the pictures Kind of cool stuff um, that was a little bit ahead of its time. Uh, those seats are kind of gaudy looking, but I imagine with those uh, deep molsters, it probably hold you in, in place really well. Uh, and that will come in handy when you find out how well this car handles. So uh, they built 1,036 coupes. And then a little bit later, uh, they built uh, another few hundred RZs that were convertibles. But uh, this is number 538 of 1036 built. The car was sold in Europe. And then immediately it was shipped to Japan where it spent like 26 years or something. And then a couple of years ago, somebody brought it to uh, British Columbia, Vancouver, British Columbia. And that's where it is being offered out of. This car is, it looks to be in excellent condition. It has just 10,000 kilometers on the odometer, which is about 6,000 miles. So this is really a collector grade version of the car. 
But JP, if you turn me loose in that thing, I would take that up the crest and just like roast people in similar era Porsches. I think that this car is pretty light and pretty fast and pretty bitching. It's super butch. I didn't like it long time ago when it first came out, but it's really kind of grown on me because it's just so different and so distinctly Italian. You know, it's kind of a F you to conventional design. And I, I'm learning to appreciate that more and more. Uh, so I suddenly find myself craving one of these cars. I, I definitely want to drive one one of these days. Uh, what do you think? Yay or nay? Is it, it's, it's totally polarizing, is it not? Yeah, I mean, there's a phrase in creative uh, and design uh, it's it's a trope. It's a creative that or design that doesn't take a chance doesn't stand a chance. Uh, uh -huh. And this design took some chances. Uh, oh, absolutely. But you know, risk reward analysis did not seem to come through here. This might be one of the ugliest cars I think I've ever seen in my entire life. It right. looks like someone took a first gen Corrado and kind of like, kind of like the you know, people took Ferraris <laughs> or not Ferraris but Fieros and put body kits on them to make it yep. look like a Ferrari. Yep. This looked yep. like that maybe or, or maybe a first gen CRX <laughs> and tried to make it look like an 850 BMW. Uh, it's just, <laughs> it's just the proportions are just. I mean, you said you know multiple there were multiple hands in the design of this and that yeah. shows, you know, when you have a committee right. that's, that's put, Oh, okay. Well, this guy says, this is what happens. You need right. to just let a designer do their thing. Uh, you can't let a committee come through. And, uh, this, this thing is so ugly. Uh, I'll explain what that means sometime, but not on this show. Yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> that is an ugly ass car. And, uh, you know, but I yeah. do appreciate that it's different and, uh, I've never driven one. This is a front wheel drive, right? Or is it rear wheel? Drive? Uh, no, it's rear wheel drive. Yeah, oh, rear Cause it's drive. based on the, uh, the, the, what was it the Milano, Milano. you said yeah, yeah okay yeah. yeah god that'd be weird that'd be interesting three yeah. <laughs> six headlights now listen JP I would say if this car had come out beautiful and you had that same basic recipe of like I'm guessing this is you know uh like a 2600 pound car with 210 yeah. horsepower and rear wheel drive Zagato mm -hmm. sort of coach built design if this car had come out even a little bit prettier mm -hmm. I would imagine we'd be talking about 150 to 250 thousand dollar car in today's mm -hmm. market if not more because the limited uh, you know, limited uh, numbers produced and uh, and the extreme performance compared to the conventional cars in period. Uh, but this car has uh, has just always been ugly. I've just finally warmed up to it, uh, and it's taken me you know thirty years. But <laughs> by all accounts, this car should do well. Uh, it is in British Columbia, but that'll be easy to bring in on the twenty five year. Uh, so I wouldn't be afraid to take a chance on this car, especially one with this low miles. By all accounts, JP. This should be an eighty-five to one hundred thousand dollars car. If it was in the United States and say at RM Sotheby's, I'd say it brings a mm. hundred hundred thousand uh, dollars. But on BAT, it should be hinting around eighty. But I think the fact that it's in Canada holds it back just because of the headaches, not because of the cost, really. Uh, so it's sitting um, right now, John. It's at forty-six thousand two hundred fifty dollars with about wow. four and a half hours to go. Again, people, this is in Canada. You will have to do some work to bring it in. Uh, but I still like this car. I, I want to say that it's an eighty-five thousand dollars car, but it's just not going to bring that here. Uh, I'm gonna, but I do think there's some sky above it because of the low miles uh, and that they're, you know, they're unicorns around here. Uh, so I'm gonna go sixty-five thousand dollars and send it back to you, brother. Yeah, I'll go fifty-nine. I this thing, uh, you know, I mean, it's just God. Dang, that's an ugly car. I suppose if you're behind the wheel, you don't have to look at it. Uh, and if right. it drives as well as you say it does, then great. Right. But uh, boy, I, don't, I mean, I guess if there's a if there's a collector market and this thing could appreciate that, okay. Yeah. But this is never going to be on any list that I could imagine being. Uh, wow, that's an ugly. I just can't get over how ugly this thing is. It really uh, is. It, that is just. There's and there's like I'm sitting here looking at all the pictures trying to find angle. Does it look good? It kind of looks good there. No. Oh wait, no, it doesn't. No, it kind of looks good doesn't. here. Yeah, no, there's no, just nothing is going right working and, here from a design point of view. And, Except and the wheels. If you'll, <laughs> if you'll allow me to say this, it probably looks better in photos because when you see it in picture, it's just as stubby and boxy yeah. and as awkward to look at. Uh, you know, it's like when you see one of these wheezy like bulldogs that's like overweight and can barely like you know walk down the street. He's got an yeah. underbite, and you're like that poor thing. You would, you would have the same – that your heart would feel the same way when you saw that car in person. <laughs> but, JP, there is an elixir for that. And if you will pull up the Porsche, mm. what if instead of spending $59,000 on a 1991 Alfa Romeo SZ that you don't even like to look at, you dropped half of that money on a 1990 Porsche 944 S2? Uh, tell me, as I read you the specs, JP, is this not the same damn car? It's a three-liter 
uh, inline four with a five speed manual in a rear transaxle that makes about 210 horsepower and weighs about 3000 pounds. The 944 S2 was the bigger motor um, and, and was the evolution of the 944 in this country. Uh, this car is basically the same colorway. Uh, and this one has some miles on it. So it's going to be an even better value because our car is offered out of Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida, wherever the heck that is. And I'm sure mm. I said it wrong, uh, but it's got 92,000 miles on the odometer. Uh, they redid the leather and I really hate these 18 inch turbo twist wheels on the 944. Just get some D90s uh, and stop pretending. Uh, this car would look a thousand times better on the correct rims. Um, but I, I, this is, you know, spec for spec. This car is, is aimed at the exact same market, and you're talking reliability and performance uh, and handling that would be uh, miraculous. Uh, this car is going to be a tremendous value because JP is just sitting there. Look at this thing. is hovering at $14,001 with four hours to go in Florida uh, on just a lowly 11 bids. Uh, would you much rather have two of these, like one for me and one for you? Yeah, and I'd get one for me, and I'd leave the turbo twists on and get you one with the D90s because the D90s oh. look terrible. Nobody wants the oh. bottle caps. They're six. They're they're the offset on those. You have to put spacers that are about fourteen <laughs> in, you know, not fourteen millimeters, but fourteen inches. They right. just look, they, yeah. especially with the box fenders on the nine forty four. They just look so silly, uh, stuck way in there. I think, and I don't think these are eighteens. I would say those look like seventeen inch twists to me, mm-hmm. which I think look wonderful on the S two. I setup. didn't even know they made seventeen twists. Yeah. What so, uh, well, I, I'm, I'm thinking that's a 993 turbo wheel, right? Isn't that what it looks like? Yeah, S2S? but but the, remember the, the the turbo wheels, there were two different types of, there were the hollow ones and the solid ones. Right, uh, right, and right. so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, look in there, see if they're 17s or 18s. But um, I'll take yeah, the interior. Oh, you're right. It does. Is, it says 17 inch turbo twist wheels. I just, yeah. I really thought they were all 18s. I, I, I made an assumption. Made an ass out of you and me. Oh, man. You know what happens? I love this interior. I like the, even the little carbon fiber strip. I don't think that's factory. No, it's it, definitely not factory. Yeah, There's I mean, no that way. looks like there. Yeah, because that was a little too early. They did that in 993s and 968s uh, yeah. in the exclusive this, or whatever. But yeah, this, this guy is probably also vital. painted his valve cover bright red yeah, guard like red that. valve yeah. cover in the inch bay i don't like that i don't like the yeah. wheels i don't like the thing i don't even like that he re-leathered the seats uh they they don't look like they were expertly done um in other words you can look at them until they've been re-leathered yeah. but i want this car i i want a normally aspirated 944 that i can just wail on this would be a f- yeah. i would I would love to drive this car. This looks um, like a fantastic car. Uh, uh, the only really knock against it is that it's in Florida, and that is always yeah. scary because you're always worried about corrosion. You're always worried about that, you know, that stinky kind of mildewy thing that happens <laughs> in yeah, uh, really seriously. high humidity places uh, like Florida. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, that yeah. red valve cover is not a good <laughs> idea on there. Um, <laughs> did he mention if it's had head work yet? You know, I mean, these are pretty darn uh, reliable no, setups. Or I think there was a timing belt that was done uh, okay. a couple of years ago, but nothing about the head work per se. Yeah, I mean the 16 I valve saw. head is a little less reliable than the you know the solid eight valve one, but Frank, they're overall pretty reliable. And yeah. Frank Collins preaches that he goes, he's like, he goes, Michael, just get a turbo. He goes, get an 86 turbo. It's best value, and you can like turn up the wick on the turbo and have fun. He he thinks that the 16 valve three liters um, are. A teeny bit problematic that that's not the right car to get. To, that he says to get the turbo. I just I'm a normally aspirated guy. I, yeah, uh, me too. There's your D90s. Deal. Look at that. It comes with a the bottle. There caps. you go. Oh, thank God. You're Problem good solved. You're good to go. All right. I'm okay. I love, I love the car. But I mean, look at that. It, it, compared to that SZ, you know, yeah. clearly Alpha was going after that market. Um, and again, from a design standpoint, they weren't successful. From a performance standpoint, they surprisingly were. Uh, but look, you know, while those cars bring big money, it's only because they only made a thousand of them and, you know, Porsche sent these all over the world. But I mean, this is the car to have. I mean, like from that era, this is, you know, a great driving car. I mean, this was this gold standard for balance and handling. I, I, I really want one. I'm, you, you know, me, I'm, I'm, this yeah. is going to be my next car. I'm sure of it. All right. So where's it going to, where, how much is it uh, at right now it's, on it's at uh, 14? 14- 14 grand with 92,000 miles, just 11 bids, four hours to go, but it is in Florida, JP. I I mean, I don't know. I just, I think because of the miles and the wheels and the carbon and the red valve cover, I don't think it breaks 20 grand. I'm going to say $19,000. 
to the BAT community. Yeah. But I don't know. You tell me. Am yeah, I, these are I coming short? up a little bit, but not that much. Um, I think the wheels are helping it, if anything. Uh, it's really weird right. that you don't like these wheels. It's just weird. It's weird. Not on that um, car. I like yeah, the wheels. No, no. Car. On this car, are, these are yeah. the correct wheels to put on this car. That's all there is to it. That is that is a fact. It's not really an opinion <laughs> or anything okay, who's like our, that. Who's our friend Kelly from Haggerty that we're trying to get on the show? What's his yes. name? Kelly Smith? Yeah. Okay. What are the wheels that Kelly Smith has on his blue 993? They're uh, 18s. He has uh, they're speed lines. They're like, yeah, yeah. He has speed I lines, would yeah. put those wheels on this car, and then you guys can all be like, oh, that's the best looking 945 I've ever seen. I'll be like, yeah, yeah I know. No. Just ask well, Kelly Smith. Speed I think, lines I think are like $10,000. Yeah. Well, that's Absolutely. almost as much as this car's worth. Durr. <laughs> you love to be yeah. like, well, I mean, you know, do you get a Miata or do you get an S2000? Of course you get I'm, the S2000 for twice as much. Why not get an F430 for five I'm times as much? Wait, yeah, I rest my case. Go for the questions. I win. Man, it's, it's okay. Yeah, problem yeah, solved. That's the answer right there. The, the, uh, <laughs> the answer to all questions, spend more money. Uh, okay, so this car is great. Uh, you, what was your number? You said 19 19 something? grand. Where yeah. are you going? Over I'm going under. right under you. Right under yeah, you. I'll go 18. Shit, shit. Um, <laughs> if this were in California, it'd be 22. Uh, there you but go. It's, it's, but it's take. in the wrong place in the, uh, the country. Uh, you're going to have to ship yeah. this thing. And 944s are just not bringing big money. I like the yeah. ST. I would definitely rather have this over the turbo like you said a naturally aspirated car is more fun yeah. to me um yeah, yeah we do yeah. we're good friends with a bunch of porsche mechanics i'll take my chances i yeah. i, I, <laughs> right? I frank yeah. i think frank is right yep. and i'd probably still take this three liter i think it'd be really fun uh yeah. especially if you get like an air filter and exhaust on there and maybe get you know 10 more horsepower out of it i think that's yeah. all you need you'd be yep. at like 220 230 Ooh, yep baby good times all right good next? looking car all right jp now we got a couple of exotic cars uh let's do the maserati first let's go over mm. cars and bids doug demiro uh, ending the um 2005 maserati grand sport uh this is a interesting car it's got just twenty one thousand miles and it's offered out of Milwaukee, wisconsin hmm. um, on paper everybody should love this car it is a front engine two-door four-seat coupe that's rear wheel drive and uses a 4.2 liter v8 that ferrari designed that is a ferrari derived 400 horsepower normally aspirated v8 with 335 pound foot of torque it even uses the trademarked Skyhook suspension, which is a active suspension system that Mazda, uh, that Mazda happens to use. But that is on this car. These cars handle really well. The problem is hmm. most of these cars were ordered with the F1 gearbox, which is in Maserati speak called the Cambria Corsa. These are single clutch uh, electronically e e engaged transmissions, and they're just garbage. There's the, 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 the shift time is slow and clunky. And nobody really wants these things. Uh, to make matters worse, uh, for, uh, Ferrari and Maserati and Porsche in this era all got caught up with uh, these interiors that made with the uh, buttons. The uh, material that they were sourcing for the interior uh, started to fail, and they call it the sticky button problem. And these Maseratis have it in spades. All of them are uh, guilty of having the thing. So you either have a car that needs to be addressed or has already been addressed. And uh, it's not mentioned in this ad, which is kind of a bummer, uh, or at least I didn't see it. Maybe I glazed over it and uh, and missed it. But these cars have just been soft in the secondary market. It would help if this was a six-speed manual, but they just never brought the big money, uh, despite being the grand sport with more aggressive seats and uh, more aggressive body work. Uh, this car's got low miles, uh, but it's not going to bring big money. Um, so JP... An unreliable Maserati with potential sticky bombs. Uh, what do you think? You know, how far would you run to get away from this car? You know? Yeah, you know, I w I'm with you. I want to love it. I actually really like that interior. I, I think it's beautiful. But uh, in the seats, you know, with the hard backs and the and man, it looks good. But without a stick, this thing is just worthless. Yeah, I, driving one of these, it's like kabang every time you uh, every time you pull one of those flappy paddles it feels like somebody's hitting the car with a hammer and it's not like totally. oh my gosh you have all this power it just feels like what the hell was that clunk you know and the car lurches it's just it feels like you're breaking it that's not fun um so yeah i want to love it you know which car would you rather have this or an 87 maserati b turbo that's got all the 80s love Ooh, come I think on the maserati b turbo is come is, on it's 
it's Radwood royalty, maybe. Yeah. That would be hot, you know? Especially and if it's the right yeah, color. Did you see Magnus the other day uh, was on, I think, Smoking Tire or something like that, and they uh-huh. had that, uh, what is that called? The Shem- Shemola? I, I can't Shemal. remember. Shamal, wind. yeah. Named after a wind. Oh, yeah. It's Got it. Wind, yeah. All right. Yeah. What is it with that era and winds? It's like the Corrado is a desert wind. The Scirocco is a desert wind. All Maserati the winds. and Volkswagen. Yeah. Maserati um, and Volkswagen both did that. It's really funny. I, I think it's so funny. I'm definitely thinking uh, Maseratis of that era are the ne- might be the next big thing. This Maserati from an era that is not really appreciated. And if anything, it's no. kind of like, you know, this is th- th- that early aughts uh enthusiast cars i think are where you can find the best bargains right now because yeah. they are the least appreciated cars uh and this car man it looks great but don't want it what's it uh, yeah. where's it gonna land that body that body kit helps it but you know not enough that it's like a serious contender yeah. for a place in your garage uh so jp with just about an hour and 40 minutes to go our car does have 21 bids out of milwaukee wisconsin but it's only at seventeen thousand dollars wow this is a 21,000-mile example. They do not address, at least in the ad that I can see, the sticky button issue, uh, and that could be a problem. Now, by this time with Porsche, they had been uh, corrected, uh, but I, I'm, I still believe that that could be a, a problem thing. And, you know, and it's not the end of the world, but it's just it's a hassle. It's just not fun. I, that is I, not I the case be- with the Porsches, man. The, the, but in the, the early gener- – the, the first-gen 997s had horrible sticky button problems. Oh, they did? Still, oh, yeah, okay, so yeah. It, wasn't, until, it right. wasn't until the dot twos that they fixed that. Okay, okay. Yeah. So I stand yeah, corrected. So you're right. I thought, after the, I thought after the 996s they had corrected that. Mm-hmm. So uh, my partner is telling us this was still an issue. And it's funny. I love that we, we should really find out the name like as a geek thing. Mm-hmm. The name of the company that produced the material that all these luxury car companies – we're sourcing it from because it's really ruined uh, the, the resale value of a lot of automobiles. Mm. Uh, someday we'll get past it, but it doesn't look like it. it's going to happen today. So JPR cars at 17,000. I said grand last night uh, because it's cars and bid. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, normally, if I was on BAT, I'd put my bid market. Today. Look at the action. But man, cars and bids, it seems like it's the wrong platform for this car being in this nice condition, especially with that pearl white paint job. Uh, so I'm going to go 20 grand and leave it there. Where are you? Yeah, I'm definitely going under on that. Uh, I'll go 19. It's at 17. It's, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, right. so it's, I mean, yeah, 20, how many, how, yeah, an hour and a half, there's no way. We went to yeah. house and an hour and a half, yeah, I know. Yeah. Let's it did go, get let, from action overnight. It was at 15 grand last night, right? so it's made grand overnight or this morning, however you want to look at it, uh, but still, I, you know, it needs another two grand to reach your number. And another three to get mine. So there you go. Do not see late stage rallies on cars and bids very often. Nah. And this doesn't look like one that will bring it. Eh, maybe we're wrong though, because this is a special one. And uh, I, I feel like that would be a bargain at 20 grand because uh, it does have fairly low too, miles, right? For the most, I mean, think about the basic platform that, that you know, four and a half liter VA with 400 horsepower. They put mm-hmm. that in the Alpha 8C. Remember, we saw one of those at uh, mm, the yeah. pickup in Brisbane. Um, those cars are three, four thousand dollars, yeah. and it's you know, you know, the gusts are somewhat, so almost the same car. Uh, but again, um, Alpha only built a thousand of those things, or seven hundred of them, or something for the world, um, and so they hold their value really, really well. What do you think the reserve on this car is? I mean, it's probably twenty five. I don't think it sells at twenty. You know, oh, that's a good question. I, yeah. Well, and I think that's a mistake if you think you're getting twenty five grand for a used Maserati. I mean. JP, this car you know, wouldn't even book for fourteen grand. I don't think. You don't think you even know? being the course. I, I think being the the this being the Grand special Sport, trim, yeah. I think it does. Uh, you know, know, a regular one's probably yeah. Whatever. Anyways, uh, we it we shall matter. see. We've only got an hour and a half yeah. to go. Let's find out. Uh, all right, what's the last car of the day? What do we got? All right, last car. I, this one's actually a treat, JP. I hope you like this thing. Mm. I I love this nineteen seventy four Toyota Corona, <laughs> but it's a two thousand J uh, GT. Uh, so this is a J- JDM car. L- repeat after me. I will commit to driving a right-hand drive car. And if you can't <laughs> say it, you shouldn't even be looking at this car. Uh, but this thing has 36,000 kilometers or about 22,000 miles. It's offered out of Walnut Creek, California. Um, the thing that makes this special is that in the GT, the 2000 GT, Toyota sourced a two-liter. They call it the 18R-G twin cam inline four. Check this out, JP. This is gonna, you're going to love this. Uh, this uses Yamaha heads. So Yamaha, which is you know motorcycle and racing company, put the heads for this thing. Uh, it'll rev to 7,000 RPM and makes about 140 horsepower in 1974 from just two liters. 
Um, and the five-speed manual, they sourced the Porsche Synchro Mesh, which I'm sure mm. came out of a ZF transmission or something. So the five-speed has uh, – the internals of the five-speed um, are Porsche-derived. Uh, and then, of course, it uses – and you'll love this as a motorcycle guy. It uses two 40-millimeter Makuni carburetors mm. that are side-draft carburetors. So this thing has all the hot parts that they could find to uh, make the 2000 GT version of their Econo, you know – you know commuter car uh, a little hot rod it's rear wheel drive five speed manual this is this thing is bitching i love it if it wasn't right hand drive i would be all over that car i love the spec and i about i imagine it sounds awesome and probably drives great too the toyota corona from japan the 2000 gt um I, I list these early era japanese cars uh, have a cult following since the fast and the furious JP, I'm sure you've seen this car in person before, right? Really. What a cool car. I love that, uh, you know, no right. B-pillar uh, with that rear yeah. window down. Look how cool it is. Yeah. My sensei, my karate instructor back in the 90s, had yeah. one of these. And she yeah. was a white chick who lived in Japan for a long time. And when she came back to America, she had one. And I, I want to say it was like silver or gold or something like that. And right. I remember looking at this car and she drove it. It was right-hand drive. It was like, wow, that is something else uh, this is uh, she was yeah. living the ja- the yeah the japanese thing um wow what a cool car no sec no b pillar i want to just drive this thing around with the windows down um as a cabrio fan this is you know having no b pillar and having all the windows opened up like that is just a great feeling on a beautiful day uh and racing down a canyon road how much fun would this be uh it reminds me actually of my uh second car which was a dodge colt a 78 that was uh basically a <laughs> mitsubishi with a little hemi and a five speed or no it was a four speed manual rear wheel drive um but it kind of looked like this thing um i mean it wasn't a dodge it was a mitsubishi but it was branded dodge so yeah i don't know love it uh what's how much is this thing where's it sitting at right now jp 15 grand just under three hours to go walnut creek california is the bay bridge um so in the bay area uh, we should tell uh, uh, Saul to go buy it, and and, mm. uh, and we'll make a film about it. I, I think this thing is awesome. I, the, the only thing that holds me back truly is the right hand drive. I, I, I couldn't, yeah. I'm not ready to adapt to shifting with my left hand and and gauging my apexes from the wrong side of the car. Yeah. Uh, but I, I one of these days I might do something stupid and buy a right hand drive car. It's just not going to be this one. Uh, but this I, I think this car is cool. That motor is everything. I bet it's a blast to drive. So I think JP. I was really hoping it'd show some action overnight, and it has not. Mm. It was at that number last night at fifteen thousand. Um, I wanted to say twenty-five grand, but I don't think it's going to get there. Uh, I think twenty thousand is more realistic. Um, it, it's probably eighteen. I don't know. Uh, it, it should be appreciated. Maybe it has a late fury, but it, it, reading the room, I don't think so. So I'm going to say twenty and send it to you. Yeah, I'll take your eighteen bid. Um, uh, you gotta love the guy driving with some vans there. That kind of makes sense. Yeah, that's a period, correct? For sure. Uh, boy, I wanted, uh, it's kind of neat to see a, a driver video here. It'd be nice if it were a better driver video. You could tell he's actually holding on to the uh, camera there. Don't do that. That's kind of dangerous. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say eighteen just... and say why not? How, is this gonna go for more? Will this be bid to a higher number than that Maserati <laughs> Grand Sport? Oh yeah, right. How it would another another weird juxtaposition to see what yeah. happens. That would be yeah. crazy. Um, I man, if if you told me it'd be easy to flip it over to a left hand drive, I might rather have it than the Maserati Grand Sport. Uh, yeah, but it's not because <laughs> you. I mean, you yeah. got the interior <laughs> stuff to deal with. Um, this yeah, you'd thing, have to. You'd yeah. have to. But you could. Could what I'm saying is, couldn't you source a non GT dash that is made for the left hand drive market? And then just plug everything in on the other side of the Whoa. engine. I don't know. A mechanic needs to answer that question. I mean, holy cow, to change the whole interior and put it on the other side, I just, just the cost of it. I mean, this car, if this car were a $100,000 car, it'd be a different story. Uh, sure. But it's not. I mean, clearly not it's somewhere around yeah, no, a 15 or 20 grand. Not. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Video, video game way, not really. Yeah. Uh, folks, if you're selling looking, your car on one of these platforms, turn your camera horizontal. What oh are you doing? God, this yes. is an Instagram. Wow, the interior of that is freaking clean. Super um, clean. Dang. Uh, 
Yeah, no. I'd, I'd still change the front seats. I'd put buckets in there, like vintage buckets. Be yeah, awesome. the, but those are stock, though. Those those seats. Are I know. I know. It's seats. super clean. I, those I'm are not, great. I'm not in your tank. It's crazy. Why would you Absolutely. take those out? That's berserker. All right, bid nerds. There it is. Uh, well, guys, yeah. that's another bid nerds. That's a Tuesday edition. We do this every Monday through Friday uh, at about the nine o'clock hour if we get up on time, yeah. which is almost never. Um, yeah. So thanks for uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe, like, notifications buttons. Uh, let us know the cars that you want us to review. If you see a car that you think is the most interesting car of the day on Cars and Bids, bring a trailer, P Car Market, any or any of the automotive enthusiast auction sites. Let us know, and we'll put that on our list, and maybe we'll nerd out about it and have a good time with that car. Uh, make sure that you check out Guys Customs G Y X underscore Customs on Instagram, and get yourself a bespoke bracelet that matches your car or your watch, just like my. Michael Deeb is wearing his, what is that? Uh, Ruby rot, uh, Rubino rot red. Yep. Uh, yep. It's a, uh, it's Rubino rot metallizato. Metallizato. For a German car. Uh, Rochelle, love you. Thank you very much. I, these things are awesome. Fantastic. All right, guys, we will see you tomorrow morning. Um, that's been another edition of bid nerds guys. We don't even know how to end the show. It's just a show. Yeah. Say goodbye. All right. It's going to be loud. Here we go.